Excuse me. Hey, Jim. I'm working on a stove today, but not that one. Today, I'm going to be working more on my barrel stove project. And if you haven't already, here's the uh, uh, first in uh, the series here where I actually acquire the barrel and get it to this point. Today, um, as you can see, I don't have the chimney in yet or any of my air intakes. And I'll explain all that in a second. But today, I'm going to attempt to make this barrel stove super uh, efficient with just a few little modifications. Let me show you what I got in mind. Um, my budget went up, so I was able to hire a six-year-old to do these drawings for me. Okay, well, bear with me here. This is my barrel, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my main air come in through the back of the barrel from outside and it's going to come up go uh, into the firebox the same place it would have come in if i had used this uh, air vent that's in the door and i'll have a little bit more airflow available the extra benefit of this is the pipe is at the bottom of the firebox and this air will be preheated coming in so i won't be throwing uh, potentially ice cold air into my firebox. It'll be nice and warmed up by the time it comes in. In theory, uh, I'll show you what I've got to make that work even better when we get inside the stove. Then up here, I want to add a second piece of uh, metal, like a sheet metal. And underneath that sheet metal, another pipe that's got little holes in it here that also comes from outside air with a throttle there. Uh, both of these air inlets have uh, valves on them that are adjustable. And what this one does is when you get everything going real good, this one introduces fresh oxygen up at the top where all of the gases are that come off of the uh, smoldering wood. You can burn the fire a lot lower and, and then you get a bunch of extra combustion up here when this is working good. Then it'll have to go out and up on top of my new piece of sheet metal here. And if that doesn't make sense, um, I'll show you. But then we've got the front view and ignore all of this stuff for now, but that will be the uh, adjustment for uh, the main air. And then I don't think it'll be on this side. I think it'll also be on this side. Then it'll be like a shift thing, but we're gonna use an exhaust manifold from the Honda here. Let me show you. You'll see that I put the door in this barrel in the bottom where it was just smooth and solid. And the top of this fixed head barrel had uh, two fittings in it. And it just so happens to be the same thread exactly as a two inch pipe. It's a two inch pipe thread. And this is three quarter inch pipe thread. Very convenient. Um, I did position them in this way because I was kind of thinking about this from the start. Uh, let me show you how it's going to work from the inside. Uh, well, one second here. This is going to be through the wall and uh, deliver four inches of possible airflow. And then it splits off for up top here. And that's how I'm thinking that's going to work. Let's see about the inside stuff. Wow, nice lighting, huh? Okay, so this is my main uh, pipe coming in, and this is going to be the pipe for up top uh, for my secondary burn. And the preparation I've done so far is I have welded the end mostly shut. And now I need to cross drill this. Uh, I need to drill at least 36 eighth inch holes in this. I'm probably going to maybe uh, put in 40 or 50, who knows? We'll see when I get on the drill press. If it's a real pain, there'll be fewer. But I'm gonna cross drill this uh, equal distance apart all the way down. So I'll have to start with one in the middle, see how hard it is, and that'll determine how many I put in each direction. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and put in this bottom pipe right now. Okay, there's my air intake pipe. And remember, this is the original air intake right here. That's all there is. And that worked pretty good. So now you may be saying, well, you're a little short there, pal. Well, check this out. I'm going to use the exhaust manifold off of the $200 Honda as the intake manifold in my stove. I'm going to need two hands. Like that. It's cast iron, so it will pick up a lot of heat once this thing gets going. That's the trick with this stove, is it's going to take some time for everything to get preheated and get a, a head of steam built up. But I'm going to fly you in where I can't go, and you can see that the two-inch pipe is supported by a, a cap underneath, and then it slips over the... Uh, outlet on the exhaust manifold and it's just a slip fit but that's good enough and then the exhaust manifold is also supported by another pipe cap underneath there you can see and it's pretty solid nice and that's where my air is gonna come in those four inlets which are a lot larger than these but I'll be able to throttle it down to whatever level I want. The slip joint on the exhaust manifold to the pipe also is nice because it allows for expansion of these different uh, metals. Like the pipe is going to get a little bit longer when it gets hotter. And it just allows for a little bit of movement there without everything breaking and cracking. And there you go. Uh, I lined it as best I could with bricks. So the bricks, kind of like this cast iron stuff, they, they act like a, uh, oh, like, like a, a heat battery or like a, a heat shock absorber. So you, if you don't have any bricks in here, you build a fire, your barrel gets really hot, and then your fire goes out, your barrel gets cold, and it just, it's hard to keep the fire going, if, especially if it's in a cold environment. With the bricks... They're, they're like a, a, a shock absorber or a heat battery in that they get hot and they stay hot for a long time. And it takes a lot longer to get your stove up to temperature, but then when your fire goes out, your stove will continue to radiate glorious heat for hours as these bricks slowly cool down. So what I need now is... I need to get my uh, piece of sheet metal that's going to go up top here like this, just over the top of my secondary burn pipe. So we go to the giving tree. Hello, giving tree. I need a piece of metal. Oh, look at that. Thank you, giving tree. Oh, looks like it's had some repair work done. <laughs> Maybe hail damage or something? I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, that looks toxic. So this is going to take a little bit of uh, preparation. Going to remove these and uh, maybe I'll wire brush it or something to get some of this uh, nastiness off before trying to put it in my fireplace. Yeah, this brown stuff is really a pain to remove. I've been using this thing. And it works, it's just kind of dusty and a pain. So I bent it enough to where it can barely squeeze in through the door. And ultimately I want my pipe to play like right here. And the sides, you know, it, it's going to leak a bit of draft because of all of these shapes, but that's okay. It's uh, not to make this 100% perfect, it's just to make it way better. And I don't have a glass door, a sight glass at this point. I'd like to put one in here or maybe at the side or somewhere, but uh, we'll be able to tell what's happening 
with our fire using this little jewel. It goes on the chimney pipe, which is not there yet. And it goes about 18 inches up. And when we do the demonstration here, you'll see how this is really the telltale you need to be able to determine how proper your secondary burn is happening. I have my pipe in there and my sheet metal plate is just sort of sitting there and I kind of I'm going to have to flatten it out a little bit. I had to bend it too much to get it through the door so I'm going to flatten it out a little bit where I want it to rest on the top of the pipe and I want it to actually kind of be touching the side of the barrel. So I just have to take a little bit of the bend out of it. Okay, so I'm going to remove the pipe now. This test fit has gone fabulously. And now I'm going to go drill all my little holes in my secondary burn pipe. All right, I got that pipe drilled, as you saw. And it's up there in place. And now i got to figure out how I'm going to support it. So uh, I bent this nice piece of square stock that will fit around my pipe. And then I'll determine where I need to. And I'll drill two holes from the outside where this can poke through. Uh, the ends of this bracket will poke through. And then I will weld the bracket and then grind it smooth and what that'll give me is nice support for my pipe which you can see it's a little loose here so it'll give me nice support for the pipe and at the same time won't directly attach to the pipe the pipe will be able to slide in the bottom of this so it can expand and contract a little bit without causing stress on the welds and i'm not sure if i need to attach this plate at all I guess I do. It'll probably start making noise in here if I don't, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I think we've got it got all my bricks and I've got my secondary burn pipe installed I ended up drilling some holes just where I could reach them and putting a nail through with a washer and then welding it I'm not the greatest welder but it doesn't matter I think that's good our uh, interior is ready to go. Now it's just a matter of uh, putting in my chimney. I'm going to put this piece of drywall up here, starting right about here, just to give myself an extra layer. And then I'm going to put a metal heat shield. And I have some metal around here, so it'll be interesting to see what I decide to use as my heat shield. But next time we talk about this stove, it should be for its inaugural burn. Because I'm going to go ahead and put all that other stuff in, the chimney and all. And then, of course, we'll have our secondary burn valve operated by this Z4 shift knob. And if it gets really, really hot during use, then that'll be perfect because that's exactly how it was in the car. <laughs> and if you have had a Z4 in a hot environment you know what i'm talking about and then our main is going to be something like this which our main air will be controlled by this throttle here and i'll be bringing all the controls forward where they're right up here next to the front thanks for watching